What's up, witches? It's Witch Angel Nakora, and welcome back to Hive Swap Friend Sim. Okay, Volume 11 just dropped today on Labor Day. And I know the previous chapter just was just released, like, what? Last, the end of last month? See, what Pumpkin went ahead and created Volume 11, and it just came out today. So let's get on into this. Volume 11 of Pals and Promises Made and Broken. We get another Jade Blood and we get another Cerulean. <clears throat> another night, another long, long walk. Despite the blisters, you have started to feel truly optimistic. You've got a lot going for you these days. True, you're still technically a castaway on a hostile planet with absolutely no hope of rescue. But if you're completely honest, Earth is pretty crappy, too. Sure, 98% of everyone here is a psychopath who would rip your face off as soon as look at you. But it's the other 2% that are actually going to make it all worth it. Okay, we have Lanera. Oh my god, look at that. She's really freaky looking. When it comes to her, I uh, think she's got the knives up here. Yandere, I guess. And we have Malik. Oh, he looks kind of cool. Okay, who should I pick? To really entertain. Oh, what the hell? Let's go with Jade. <laughs> you've had such good luck making friends lately that you feel almost popular. But at the same time, you feel a strange sense of loneliness that your new friendship doesn't seem to penetrate. Maybe being the only one in your species light years away from home is starting to catch up with you. Or maybe you're starting to understand why popular kids in movies sometimes seem so sad. Number of trolls really like, you know, a number of trolls now like you, but do any of them truly know you? What you wouldn't give to hang out with someone you have real history with. Someone with whom you don't have to do the introductory dance of, yes, I'm clearly an alien, no, I don't know what's going on. Someone with whom you could reminisce about old times. Someone you've hung out with more than once. Right now you're on the outskirts of town and the rocky outcrops surrounding you are familiar. You're pretty sure the entrance to the brooding caverns is somewhere around here somewhere. Your heart beats a little faster. Bronya lives close to here and talk about history. You two know each other deeply from hanging out once and then seeing her again in her ex mate Spritz hive. Plus you have a phone now. You have the power to text first. You get the phone Connell gave you. Looking at you go, reading an alien language and operating alien technology just fine. Does it make sense you've learned how to read a new alphabet in weeks without anyone teaching you? Not really, but your struggles with Spanish class in high school were just a fluke and you've been a secret linguistic genius this entire time. Bronya texts you back immediately, giving you directions for how to meet her in the cave. You head down, but before the jade blood hives in flight, in sight, a troll emerges from the shadows. At first you think it's Bronya, but you freeze mid-wave when this new troll steps into the light. Bronya doesn't wear glasses, and she has never glared at you like that. It's you! I remember you! Whoa, okay, so up here it's basically like her mood, okay. You were down here a few weeks ago! Bob and Bronya and distracted him when we almost had a loose stampede! Ouch. Is that really how Bronya has described your adventures together? Maybe it's silly for something that small to hurt your feelings when in another recent friend nearly got you killed in clown church. But you like to think that you and Bronya formed a real connection. She never made you feel like you were bothering her. A real connection! In some way you think you just come down here and text her? Holy crap. Is Lanera reading Bronya's messages? Does Bronya know that she's been doing that? That's none of your business! Bronya and I are best friends! I'm just looking out for her! She has a lot of jade blood responsibilities! She doesn't need anyone crappy to come in and ask too many to disrupt her! I thought, she, I thought it said shitty, but it's actually shifty. Whoopsie. <laughs> You have to wonder if Brony would agree with this statement on, made on her behalf. And you sure would like to see her in person con and confirm for herself. Oh, you would like that, wouldn't you? Why don't you tell me, what is the nature of your relationship? Oh, she is definitely like an overbearing mama. 
I should allow you to hang out with her. As, as your text match is still boldly suggested. Bluffing has saved your butt in some bleak situations before, but you can also go on the offensive here. You're concerned about Bronia's privacy now, and her friend, and as her friend, you shouldn't just look the other way. Uh, what right do you have to creep on her phone? You pop up for all the self-righteousness you can muster. The nature of your relationship with Bronia is between you and Bronia, and you're not doing anything suspicious by wanting to see your friend. In fact, it seems a little more suspicious that Linera is trying to intercept anyone who messages Bronia. What possible reason could she have to justify that? Well, I never! As I said before, I am Bronia's best friend! I take our relationship, I mean, my responsibilities as a friend, very seriously! You press the issue, narrowing your eyes and crossing your arms over your chest. Her responsibilities as a friend, huh? Sounds kind of... fishy. Fishy? Are you serious right now? Are you really coming down here to make a fish pun like some kind of sea dweller? You're suspicious. Who knows what Brody decided to show you when you tricked her into trusting you. I don't have anything to hide, but who knows? If you're all associated with sea dwellers, then we have a pretty big problem on our hands, don't we? Uh, one? There have been no sea dwellers released in volume one of a uh, patrol call. You've heard of sea dwellers by now, but none of your friends have talked about them much. Mostly, you gather the, that they dwell in the sea. You don't know why it'd be extra bad for you to be one of them, but I clearly you need to backpedal. Before you can type zone your choice of fish related phrasing, Lanera advances on you. Obviously, I can't let you talk to Bronya now! You're way too suspicious! I think you and I should have a private conversation instead. And at least your life was uneventful when you're unconscious. Whoa! Can I have your hive? I love it! <sighs> a light switches on, and you can see that the cave walls are lined with bookshelves, and there's a desk in the corner. There are books and notebooks and bulletin boards with what looks like outlines and study guides pinned to them. And in front of you is Lanera holding a knife. Oh, good! You're awake! Oh my god, she's holding a knife to me like some sort of yandere weirdo. This is my study cave! In the Jade Blood Hive, it's hot, hot to concentrate because people break the rules and I get irritated. I come here to do homework. That's all! Just homework! We take a second look at the bulletin boards. You did a, a, a lot that what Lanera has are pictures of Bronya. Yonder is stalker! Yonder is stalker! There are a few pictures of Lanera and Bronya together, but it's mostly just Bronya by herself, and even a couple blurry photos of Bronya and Elward. Yonder is stalker! Yonder is stalker! I think we found the Jade Blood version of Yonder Chan! Just with glasses! What are you looking at? There's nothing to stay here! She branches the knife in your face and, okay, uh, yeah, sure now I'll see her gigantic knife have your full attention. And you're not looking at her creepy Bronya shrine anymore. She's literally like, not a sweet senpai. I brought you here because your messages hit to Bronya were highly suspicious. I don't know you and I don't trust you. You'll be trying to see Bronya for nefarious purposes. I brought you here to vet you. Now we talk about what your real intentions are. So you're definitely gonna die in this cave, held captive by an unhinged jade blood who is convinced of your guilt the moment you dare to text your best friend. This kind of sucks. You tried so hard, and you got so far, but in the end, it didn't even matter. Thanks for the Lincoln Park reference. Oh come on, stop playing the victim. If anyone here is the victim here, it's me! I tried so hard to be the Fabronia as her best friend, but she... She doesn't even... Linera stops abruptly. You see her lower lip start to tremble before she turns her face away from you. The sharp tip of the knife pointed at your throat droops a bit. Its dejected swing takes a dangerous look close to your navel, and you try to softly lean backwards in your chair. Linera interprets the noise of distress that escapes your mouth as a noise of sympathy. It's fine, though. Really, it's fine. The friendship is great. I wouldn't change anything about it. 
fun as long as she doesn't have any other friends. Because I'm our best friend. I'm her, I'm her best friend. I should be the only one she needs. Lanera's knife is now completely lowered, pointing at the floor. That gives you some hope. She seems to have forgotten about her sea dweller's suspicions. Maybe if you can keep talking about Bronya, the whole stabbing notion can be taken off the table and she might even let you go. <sighs> Let's hope. You rack your brain for all the knowledge of alternative relationship dynamics that you've managed to compile on your time on this planet. Best friends, they have a special word for that, right? Yeah, Moira. You tell Lanera that you're, you're sure Bronya doesn't need anyone else. If she and Bronya are Moirails, then Lanera must be very special to her. What? I never said we were Moirails! That's not even the quadrant I want in! I mean... Ah... Uh, you want her as a maid sprint! <laughs> never mind! How dare you make assumptions! Hello, knife point again. Ah, oh, crap. All she meant to say was that he thought her, her relationship with Bronya was probably fine. You figured they must be in a quadrant together because you're a clueless alien. You're bad. I can't want you to thank that. Uh, it's probably so obvious that my my feelings for her are very red. Lanera hangs her head and her shoulders shake. Tears roll down her cheeks, dripping onto her crisp shirt collar at, and the knot of her jade green tie. Oh, someone needs a serious hug. I know I don't have a chance. She doesn't think of me that way. I'm a loyal friend and second in command. That's all I'll ever be to her, no matter what. And I try to do a really good job of being her best friend. Because what else can I do? I'm a best friend and this is I'm still in her life. This doesn't mean something to her. Maybe it's the fact that Lanero's knife hasn't come close to any of your major arteries for a hot minute. Or maybe it's the tears. Either way, you feel sympathy encroaching on the monopoly that the abject terror had previously maintained maintain in your brain's economy. <sighs> you acted as a, as a verbal sounding board or a sympathetic ear for some of your troll friends while they dealt with crises of various kinds. Slipping into the role of therapist for someone who's holding you hostage at knife point is a new one for you. But unfortunately, it's not that much of a stretch. It seems like young trolls in Alternia have to deal with these heavy life issues by themselves. Feeling so alone that they're willing to turn to an alien stranger to help them work things out. And then again, maybe life is that grim and isolating for human teenagers too, and you just never noticed before. Maybe everyone's too mired in their own crap to look up and realize that the movie's fecal matter is way high, is way high for everyone around them too. You clear your throat and speak with as much consoling gentleness as you can muster while your head still throbs from where Lanera knocked you out. It seems like trying to be Bronya's best friend isn't making Lanera very happy. Of course it isn't making me happy! I can't keep her from having other friends no matter how hard I try. She's amazing! So of course everyone wants to be her friend! Including you, apparently! You barely even had a chance to miss that knife before it's waving around again. Yikes. Your friendship with Bronya is nothing like her rela relationship with, with, with Lanera. You don't count it as any kind of competition. Bronya is been one of many friends to you, and while you cherish her and support her endeavors, you, you appreciate the joy and fulfillment that can come with having many different friends instead of depending on a single person to meet all your emotional needs. Sounds fake! Who would ever want any fr friends besides Bronya? She's my whole world! Okay, but it seems like it's painful for Lanera to be relying on Bronya to be her whole world. And Bronya isn't doing the same in return. Has Lanera ever talked to Bronya about all any of this? No. Never. I'm terrified to tell how I feel. Being a best friend feels awful. But losing her would be so much worse. I can't take that risk. But if Lanera never talks to Bronya about her feelings, she'll always be unhappy because she wants more. Even if she thinks that's unlikely that Bronya feels the same way, maybe open communication with her best friend could help Lanera process her feelings and move on. You know that Lanera has a big heart, or blood pusher, and has many fine qualities, and she doesn't be stuck in this unhappy, unrequited relationship purgatory forever. Wow. You really think I have fine qualities? 
try very hard not to think about the glint of that knife. Sure, Lunara has positive qualities. She seems loyal and well-organized and studious and caring. Some troll out there is going to want the same kind of closeness from her that Lunara is looking for, and she owes it to herself to take actions that could lead to happiness instead of being stuck in a sad situation forever. I don't know. Maybe you're right or maybe you're wrong. I don't want to move on. Even I know, even if I know I should, I just I shall be with Bronya forever. Lenara crumbles to the ground, dropping the knife and sobbing into her hands. It's hard to watch someone in this much distress and not want to help them. But on the other hand, her misery has distracted her, and this might be your only chance to try to escape. I'm gonna, com I'm gonna comfort her. She really needs to be comforted. <clears throat> You remember what she did for Polipa when she was upset? Sitting in a chair with both hands tied behind you doesn't make for ideal shoosh papping conditions, but maybe we could approximate the gesture? Lenara is held crying on the floor, and you think you can maybe get close enough to lean your knee against her back or something. Hopefully that'd be interpreted in the same way as the classic palm to cheek move. You inch your chair closer to her, but you lose your balance to top and wobble and then topple forward. Oopsie! Lanaris discarded neck is right there, sharp edge ready to plunge into your incoming soft body. But then Lanara moves quickly and grabs your chair and saves your life. Oh shit, that was a close one! He really could have died! She stares at the knife with huge round eyes, clearly shaken up by your near-death experience just now. Considering how often you nearly you know, die these days, you feel more blasé about it. But you're glad it's having an impact on her if it makes her rethink the whole kidnap and stab thing. I'm so sorry. I don't want you to actually die. I saw what you were doing with that chair when you fell. You actually turned to the traditional seated front hinge shoes path because I was upset. It's actually very kind of you to try and consult me. I never really thought you were a sea dweller, you know. Maybe what I'm doing is wrong. Lanera sets her jaw with conviction and with one splash cuts you free of your bonds. Try to get to your feet stumbling bit because you, your leg fell asleep. <laughs> you can't believe you're actually getting out of the situation without any blood loss. You feel positively elated about this turn of events, but Lanera still looks sad. Get free to go. Mistake the was to me after all this. Well, you're not gonna lie. This wasn't the best start to a friendship you've ever had, but horrifying, horrifying would be enough. It also wasn't the worst. You feel for Lanera, and you really want to show her how a real friend making aficionado gets out there and meets people. Do you think about making friends could help you help her feel less clingy about Bronya? Oh! You'd really do that for me? Not just to show about new friends. But you just need to know about what you're talking about. You don't know where to go with Lanera to teach her how to make new friends. She's probably a bit too uptight to enjoy the music clubs you've been to, and you don't think the troll studying in the book hive would take kindly to a lot of loud, friendly conversation. You decide to go to the, cough, the cafe that Elward introduced you to. Thankfully, since they're not having an excessive bodily force poetry night, th since they're not, you're not sure that'd be Lanera's scene. There are a few number of ceruleans here, but you also spot a few indigos and teals in a cluster of defiant-looking olive bloods with some yellows all sitting together. <laughs> The crowd is overall less pierced and undercutted than it was when you were here with Elward, and the vibe is laid back with all the trolls just sitting around quietly and, and just chatting. You order the drinks, already taking for granted your newly acquired skill in reading troll language. Lanara is fidgeting when you sit down with her. This may come as a shock to you, but I don't get out of the cabins very much. But I'm not time! There's so much to learn about jade blood life and troll reproduction! And Brony needs my help to maintain order. It's not all, very often that I have to uh, interact with trolls about the blood colors. You're not sure what's making her uncomfortable. The trolls around here that are lower than her on the Hema spectrum, or those that are higher. <clears throat> you worked, worked about now that the jades are right in the middle, so maybe Lanera identifies with the, either the haves or the have-nots. Much remember, neutrality is a big concept with jades. You assure Lanera that it's natural to be a little nervous. Most people feel like they're stepping out of their comfort zone when they make a new friend. If there's one thing you learn as Alternia's resident friend-making expert, 
is that terror and embarrassment are par for the course. But it's worth it in the end. I'm not nervous or embarrassed. I just, I don't know. Everyone just seems disorganized and suspicious and untrustworthy and unknown. <laughs> you have to bite your lips to keep from laughing. It's not even funny. It's just that Lanera is hissing all her words and leaning in towards you and glaring at the rest of the room. And the overall effect is weirdly endearing. Like someone put 1950s school uniform on a feral cat. Before you can try to reassure her, a new troll ambles up to your table. She looks friendly. That's, and that's a friendly amble. She's wearing glasses and carrying a book bag and has a teal symbol on her chest. So she might be a nerd like Lanera. Could be a good new friend match. Hi guys. I think I've seen you around before. You also study at the book hive? You open your mouth to invite this new friend to sit down, but before you can respond, Lanera interjects. That's not any of your business, is it? How do you want to know? Obviously, anyone goes to the book hive to study goes there for peace and quiet. So would you have think you can bother us just because you recognize us from there? Okay, okay, jeez. My bad, never mind. See you around never. And just like that, golden opportunity for friendship has gone up in a puff of smoke. What's Lenera thinking being so rude? Doesn't she want to learn how to make friends? I changed my mind, okay? I don't think I can be friends with any of these people here. I don't know them. I don't think I know you. You're surprised to hear that Lenera feels so positive about you when she was ready to stab you an hour ago. She takes your hand in both her hands, squeezing your fingers tight. I didn't know we didn't get off to a great start. That's my fault. I can make it up to you. We friends now. We friends forever. And I will call anyone who ever thinks about trying to frick with you. That was not quite the lesson you had hoped to teach her about making friends, but maybe with a fierce loyalty and possessive streak spread out between you and Bronya, Lenara could be a little more low key about being friends with you both. The determined look in her eyes and the ominous glint of her glasses don't scream low key, but. Change doesn't always happen overnight, and you believe in second chances. You believe that Lanera will be capable of healthy friendships someday. Alright! We're friends with a crazy jade blood. <laughs> and I feel what this guy's feeling right here. Extremely nervous. Ugh, <sighs> oh, that was Lanera's route. And by the way, I was trying to go for a Linda Belcha kind of voice. But, sorry if it came off as Australian or any other weird accent. I was trying to go for Linda Belcher, and my brain also screamed, like, Australian at the same time. <laughs> so, yeah. Sorry about the accent confusion. But, anyway, as I said, that was Lanera's route. And just think, she had her own little mood meter above her head. <laughs> I'm just glad I never got to full-on, I'm gonna kill you because you're with my senpai kind of yandere, stabby, stabby, bye-bye. Oh boy. Anyway. Excuse me. I burped. I'm going to get on out of here. Next episode, we're going to check out the other route. We're going to check out the Radlican Cerulean Blood. I mean, he looks pretty cool. With all his piercings and stuff. <clears throat> so, I'm going to get on out of here. If you like this video, why don't you hit that like button with a big old bibbity bobbity boop, and I'll see you all in the next one. Mwah! Stay magical, my friends. But, stay away from the crazy jade blood. I think she's uh, a little too stabby-stabby. <laughs>